Well, I, I've been working in the corporate world um, really for about 12 years now. Um, and uh, my work started really with a focus on emotional intelligence. Um, but I, I was always very, um, I suppose, plugged in to the research more generally uh, in psychology. And of course, some of the absolute best research is not uh, really in organizational psychology. The very, very high quality research is in personal relationships, like marriage, you know, uh, what uh, makes people happy, in the, in the clinical psychology and so on. And there was just some really interesting data began to emerge from those domains that are actually very different um, than um, organizational life. Um, and, and what they were showing was that was something really extraordinary in psychology, which is that it's very rarely that you can take a really complex question like what makes relationships work, what makes people happy, and get a simple answer. Uh, but there is actually a whole stream of research data now, which is pointing to a kind of a stunningly simple answer to that question, which is that in all of those domains, and increasingly actually in the area of organizational psychology, where the data is just building up, that there is a metric that you have to achieve that underlies uh, how you're functioning. Uh, in other words, you have to have a very precise balance between the positive and the negative. Just to manage day to day in your personal life, in your relationships, in your team at work, in your organization more generally, you need a ratio of three positives to one negative, which is an awful lot more than maybe intuitively you would think. You would think wouldn't double the amount be enough. Um, and if you want to flourish, you've got to ramp that up to five to one. And the reason you have to have such a strong focus on the positive, a strong active focus on the positive, is because we now have extraordinarily robust information about the power of the negative uh, on human functioning. So in my view, um, I think we are, when it comes to understanding the power of the negative and the, I suppose, the complementary power of the positive, we're somewhere back where we used to be pre-green revolution, which is that you know, we used to think at one point that we could chuck any old pollution into the atmosphere and it would go away. And I think we have the same attitude to negativity. We think we can uh, ramp up the negative, uh, its intensity and its frequency, and that somehow it will go away, and now we know it doesn't. Um, at the moment, because of the pressures uh, on the economy and the pressures correspondingly then on uh, organizations, you know, the sort of uh, financial pressures, the competitive pressures, um, and, and all of that, that the, ne the negatives are uh, as it were, inexorably rising. Mm -hmm. You know, there is yeah. much more job insecurity. Um, there is more uncertainty generally about the future, um, etc. Uh, that's on top of the usual quota of, of uh, setbacks and failures and uh, failed yeah. relationships and so on that goes on in, in any uh, organization. And, and really what I'm saying is that we can't afford then to leave the positive, as it were, to uh, serendipity and hope that somehow we'll have a good day as opposed to a bad day, you actually have to have individually and collectively, you have to have um, a very conscious active strategy to build the positive in yourself as a leader, uh, in your team that you lead, uh, and in the organization um, that, you, that you work in. And correspondingly, you have got to have a conscious strategy of driving down the frequency, but most particularly the intensity uh, of negative mood, negative interactions. Because the, the evidence really on the effect of mood on productivity uh, at work is, is really extraordinarily uh, interesting. We have really good data to show that the mood at work affects how people relate to each other, um, their, the actual business results, uh, their productivity, their profitability, um, their customer satisfaction ratings, and, and obviously their 360 ratings. All of these very hard, um, as it were, uh, metrics, metrics, you know, um, are actually, you know, significantly determined. In fact, you buy 
the level of positivity in relationships. And in fact, I could go further really and say that if you want to predict these really very hard metrics, then in fact you can make a marvelously uh, robust prediction just on the basis of actually measuring the quantum uh, and ratio of positive interactions uh, versus negative interactions uh, in a team's attunement uh, with each other. And I think we're getting a much better handle on that. So I'm just beginning uh, myself to, to use those uh, metrics um, okay. as a way of measuring the, um, the, you know, the effectiveness of any interventions, uh, you know, like, for okay, example, so programs on, on sort of flourishing in, in yeah. the workplace, because essentially what you are you need to to measure and to focus on is that you know we have a very definite set of positive and negative emotions that actually drive the way you think and the way you behave and these emotional reactions are essentially what you're trying to create or on the other hand to uh, minimize uh, in the workplace so it's actually far more precise uh, and simple for something really as complex as, as how people feel uh, about the way that they work.